Back to our breaking story this hour on RT International. A permanent ceasefire has been announced in eastern Ukraine. That's according to Kiev. The statement comes after a phone conversation between Ukrainian President Poroshenko and his counterpart from Russia, Vladimir Putin. Let's now go live to RT's Paula Slia with the very latest uh, on this breaking story. Paula, could this be the beginning of dialogue then uh, between Kiev and the anti-government movement? Well, it certainly seems as if it's a step in that direction. And yes, we could be looking at a breakthrough in the deadlock between the anti-government fighters and the Kiev authorities. So to directly answer your question, it is a breakthrough. Now, what we are hearing from the Kiev authorities is that the Ukrainian president, Petro Poroshenko, spoke via telephone with the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. And the two discussed possible ways that they could end the conflict. What they did agree, and this is according to a statement that it was issued in the last few moments by Kiev, is that they are on the same page regarding the steps that need to be taken to end the months of fighting that have basically broken down eastern Ukraine. At the same time, we are hearing from the Ukrainian president that he has announced a permanent ceasefire here in eastern Ukraine. But let me point out that the news has just broken. I haven't had time to gauge any kind of response from people here in eastern Ukraine. We haven't had any official response from the ground. It does come a few days after a very important meeting in Minsk. Now, that meeting was the first time that there was a direct push between leaders of the Lugansk and Donetsk Republic and the Kiev authorities to try and reach some kind of negotiated settlement. But at that stage, we were being warned not to expect a breakthrough. However, it does seem as if a breakthrough has happened. It comes as fighting on the ground until now has been intensifying. The anti-government fighters have been winning back positions that were previously held by the Ukrainian army. No doubt it will take some time for this news to filter down to the battleground where we have been updated until a few moments ago that fighting is still on the go. Paula, thank you very much. RT's Paula Slea there reporting on this developing story on the ground in Ukraine. It is a breaking story, of course, here on RT International. A ceasefire has been announced in the east of Ukraine. To talk more on this, I'm now joined live by political analyst Alexander Pavic. Uh, thank you very much um, for joining us live and to talk about this developing, this breaking story here on RT International. Uh, why has Ukraine, do you think, uh, agreed to this ceasefire now? I think the key to this is uh, the uh, military success of the anti-Kiev forces in Donbas. I think without that, uh, Kiev probably wouldn't have been ready for this, uh, for this move. I think that's the whole thing. Uh, if they had uh, been able to successfully conduct their so-called anti-terrorist uh, action uh, and actually suppress the uh, resistance that formed, after the new government took power in Kiev this past winter, I think if they had been able to carry that through, uh, we probably wouldn't be talking about a peace plan today. We'd be pr probably talking about guerrilla warfare. But I think this is the key. Do you think that Kiev has uh, total control over all of the, the forces in the east? I mean, the National Guard, for example, do you think that they'll be able to honor this ceasefire? I don't think they have total control. I think uh, some of the forces are under, uh, let's say they're independent. Some forces are actually maybe under even control or let's say heavy influence of even outside forces, perhaps some NATO countries. But it, it may be that uh, it's in everyone's interest right now, uh, Kiev and its allies, for there to be at least a ceasefire for them to consolidate because they're they're actually suffering quite heavy losses these past few days. Considering that then, how confident are you that this ceasefire will hold? I'm afraid this looks like a tactic. I don't know if it's a strategy because uh, for that we would have to hear a clear statement from Kiev that they're really ready to talk to people from Donbas from their legitimate, with their legitimate representatives about a real long-term, not just uh, peace settlement, but actually uh, an arrangement of how to run the country, meaning they'll have to recognize uh, the political people that have come to the forefront over the past few months from Donbas. If, there, if that doesn't happen, then this will only be a temporary peace. So do you think that this is not so much a ceasefire to open dialogue, but more of a ceasefire for Kiev to reorganize its forces? It right now looks this way unless, uh, I repeat, unless we hear a clear willingness from Kiev 
either from uh, Mr. Poroshenko or somebody high up in the government structure, current government structure from Kiev, that they're ready to directly talk with representatives from uh, Donbas or Novorossiya. How do you think the wider world, the West, for example, is going to respond to this, the announcement of this ceasefire? Do you think their rhetoric is going to change in any way? Well, I think it must change. I mean, uh, you can't say we're against peace. Uh, so I think the rhetoric will be positive. Uh, however, it's actions that will speak more loudly than words, especially we have the, the, the upcoming NATO summit in Wales, and we'll see what kind of tones emanate from there. If the West says that they're interested in long-term peace, then Kiev will have no alternative. So it's really important to hear what Washington and Brussels, London and Berlin have to say about this. We haven't heard anything yet. Mm. If this ceasefire does hold and dialogue is opened, as I'm sure we all, all hope it is, um, the self-proclaimed republics say they certainly don't want to uh, uh, remain as part of Ukraine. Do you think Kiev is really ready for that sort of compromise? Well, I don't think Kiev can afford to be uh, in a position to recognize another part of the country going off on its own, like uh, happened with, with Crimea. Uh, so uh, for their own internal political reasons, on the other hand, it's really hard for people who have taken up arms over the past few months. Lots of blood has been shed. It would be really difficult for them to just say, oh yes, we will just reintegrate into this country with the capital that's been waging war against us for the past few months. So. Uh, meaning, practically, if there's some sort of a willingness to compromise on some sort of a loose federation or even a confederation, it might be the recipe for success. Otherwise, you just cannot have the same sort of country we had before this conflict started. Mm. And on the other side of, of the coin, um, inside Ukraine, there's anti-Russian sentiment. There's, of course, huge economic um, problems for the country. How is such an announcement likely to affect support for Petro Poroshenko amongst the, the Ukrainians in Kiev and, and the west of the country? Well, the radical forces will, uh, will be opposed to this, the radically anti-Russian forces, that's for sure. Uh, I think the majority of people want peace in Ukraine itself. It's just a question of how, if their voices are able to be heard. I mean, we're going to have new elections. Uh, if we have a free election campaign, relatively free election campaign, we're you know, where various candidates can really voice what they think and the majority voice gets some representative voices to speak in their name. Uh, we might see what I think people feel, and that is that most people in Ukraine want peace. They don't want uh, to wage war at any cost just to have a technically unified country where, you know, a part is at war with the other or there's permanent hatred there. So I think if we have that, if we have a free and open uh, discussion as part of the election campaign, it would really help the cause of peace. Uh, thank you very much. This is obviously a developing story as we speak. The, um, I'm sure more information is going to emerge over the next uh, hours and days. But uh, Alexander Pavic, thank you very much. Political analyst uh, Alexander Pavic joining us here to discuss this developing story here on RT International. Now, just to remind you uh, of that breaking news, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko has announced a permanent ceasefire in eastern Ukraine. That's according to his press office. Now, the statement comes following a, con a phone conversation with Russian President Vladimir Putin. It's believed the two leaders discussed and agreed on steps to try and end the bloodshed and violence uh, in the east. Of course, self-proclaimed republics, uh, they say that they are ready to sit down uh, and discuss. That's if Kiev stops its assault, the so-called anti-terror operation. Ukraine's military crackdown on anti-government fighters in the east of the country has been going on for five months, but it looks as if there might now be uh, an agreed ceasefire in the east of the country.